Hi scholars, we're going to look at TEEK 4.6D. It says, I can classify two-dimensional figures based on the presence or absence of parallel or perpendicular lines or the presence or absence of angles of a specific size. Now, I'm going to do a brief review of parallel perpendicular lines and the types of angles, but I strongly suggest that you go back and watch my video about learning about the, the, the different types of lines and angles in detail. So let's get started. Um, it says classify. Classify means you can look at it and decide which category it goes in, whether it's a square, a rectangle, a parallelogram, or a trapezoid, or a rhombus, based on if it has it or doesn't have parallel or perpendicular lines. Presence means it's there. Absence means it's not there. And you can also determine if it's uh, what kind of, if it's parallelogram, uh, rhombus, uh, square, rectangle, or even like hexagons or whatever, you know, based on types of angles and uh, specific size. So let's get started. Let's do a brief review and then go from there. Okay, so here are the five things that we need to know before I go on. There is parallel lines. These are lines that never touch or cross. So here is an example. They can be like this, they can be like this, they can be like this, they can even be like this. If they look like this, even if they're not touching, they're not parallel because you need to assume that that line keeps going and if it keeps going, then they cross. So then that's intersecting. Next, we have perpendicular. It's where it crosses and there's a 90 degree angle. So here's an example of perpendicular. There's your 90 degree angle right there. You could also have perpendicular like this. Whoops, I guess because it's, so that can be perpendicular. Perpendicular can even be this perpendicular lines. It's a right angle and you just assume that this keeps going and this keeps going. Okay, we have acute angles which are less than a 90 degree angle which is a right angle. So if this is a right angle then this is all acute. All of this is your acute angle range. Then we have the right angle which is exactly 90 degrees. This is the only way it can be. It can be this way, this way, this way, but at the end of the day it's still the letter L makes an L shape or it could be a backwards L. Then we have obtuse which is more than a right angle. So if this is a right angle then the obtuse range would be all of this. Okay. So for this first part I'm only going to talk about quadrilaterals. If you don't know what a quadrilateral is it's a polygon. A polygon is a shape that has straight sides, has vertices, and there's no curvy lines and um, there's no openings. So the quadrilaterals is a polygon that has four angles, four vertices, four sides. So this is a quadrilateral, this is a quadrilateral, this is a quadrilateral, this is a quadrilateral. All of these work as quadrilaterals. Four sides, four angles, four vertices. The first kind of quadrilateral I want to talk about is a trapezoid. The definition of a trapezoid is it's a quadrilateral that has only one set of parallel lines. So let's look at these four or these three that I have drawn and I'm going to also show you um, uh, trapezoids using these. So if you notice, uh, well if you remember parallel lines are lines that never touch and there's only one set in a trapezoid. So if I were to extend opposite lines, it has to be opposite. You can't do it with the ones next to each other because they're always going to cross, okay? If I were to extend these, well, these are always going to cross. So if you want to see if something's parallel, you got to look at the one across from it, okay? I've had lots of students um, get confused and look at the ones next to each other and they'll say, tell me, well, they don't have any parallel lines. 
and you know because they're always looking at the corners and I'm like well the corners are always going to intersect you've got to look at what's across from it so if you notice these two are never going to cross but then if you notice the this one and the one across from it do cross they will cross eventually so this these these two right here that's considered one set Okay, I know it's two lines, but it takes two lines to make one set. So you can't have like just one line and say that's parallel. You've got to have a line with it to call it parallel. So that's one set of parallel lines, and then these are not parallel. So this is a trapezoid. If you look at this one here, if you extend these, never going to touch, but if you extend these, they will touch. And I usually just have my students show me where they're touching to prove that I have one set. And then same with this one. These here will eventually touch up here, but then these don't. So these are known as trapezoids. I always tell my students that a way to remember this is think of a teepee or a travoy. We've been learning about uh, travois with the Comanche tribe. A travoy in the Comanche tribe is something that they use to carry their things. And so like if I had a trapezoid, I have to extend the lines to, to show as my evidence and then I have to circle it where it crosses. It kind of looks like a travoy that they used, the Comanche tribe used to use. And so I just kind of say, you know, like travoy, trapezoid, they kind of sound the same. Whatever helps them kind, you know, whatever helps them remember. Or, you know, I'll tell them, you know, sometimes it looks like a teepee because you have the teepees cross at the top to stay together. So um, that works too. That's just a little uh, mnemonic device to help you remember. Okay, let's look at several different trapezoids. So here's a trapezoid um, that I wanted to show you. As you can see, these two will never touch. If you extend them, and what I do is when we learn about these in class, I always let them put these little lines to extend. And I tell them make sure it lines up perfectly because if it doesn't, then it's going to look like they they will touch. So, okay. So these will never touch when you extend the lines, just like that. But then if you extend the perp the side ones, they do touch. Ooh, that's getting a little crazy. <laughs> so see how these extend and they cross and touch? Now down here, they don't touch. They actually uh, keep going outward, but from the top, they do touch. So this would be considered a trapezoid because of that feature that um, there's one set of parallel lines, which would be this one and this one, and then these don't touch. <coughs> um, another one would be, <coughs> let's look at this one. This one looks like it could be a trapezoid, but if you look very carefully, this green one is kind of going down and it just might touch the orange. I want to bring this up because if it has no parallel lines, then it's not considered a trapezoid. It's just considered a regular quadrilateral. And so, you know, there's no specific name. It's just quadrilateral. It doesn't have any little category it goes in. So if I extend these lines, which trust me, they get a little crazy. If I try to extend it as straight as I can, it does eventually touch. Just like that. See, 
Now I can change this trapezoid to work to my benefit. I can do this and then these are parallel if you notice. But then I, if I do this, you know, just shift it a little, then these are no longer parallel. That's going to go down at an angle and that's going to keep on going straight and they will cross eventually over here. So I just wanted you to see that this is a trapezoid and a quadrilateral because it has four sides. This is not a trapezoid. It's just considered a quadrilateral. Okay, the next one I want to talk about is called a parallelogram. So we just talked about um, trapezoids. Trapezoids have one set of parallel lines. Parallelogram has two sets of parallel lines. So in a trapezoid, I had shown you that these would be parallel. But in a parallelogram, these would be parallel and these would be parallel. They would never touch. So looking at this one, never going to touch. And this one, never going to touch. This one's weird. They kind of go sideways, but they are not going to touch. And then this is not going to touch. Let's look at our first parallelogram. This one right here. These yellow lines, when I extend them, will never touch. These red lines, when I extend them, will never touch. Okay? I could even do this, and it's still a parallelogram. These red lines will still never touch. These yellow lines will still never touch. Okay, a parallelogram could also have um, could have two lines that are the same size and two lines that are not the same size. That's um, a different kind of quadrilateral you categorize in. But um, parallelogram can have also all four sides the same. So like this one here, all four sides are the same size. So, you know, these will never touch and these will never touch. And I could even change the angles. These will never touch. These will never touch. Again, remember, don't, don't look at these two and say, well, they're going to cross because when I extend this green line and that green line, they're going to cross. And um, they make right angles and things like that. And they're, they're touching, so this can't be a parallelogram. Remember, when you're saying it's a parallelogram, you're saying there's two sets of parallel lines. So when you look at this line, you've got to look at the one opposite of it to see if it's parallel. Let's look at this one. This one is also a parallelogram. Even though two, like these two are the same size and these two are the same size, it still works. I can even shift it, and this can still be a parallelogram. Next one that I want to talk about is called a rhombus. A rhombus has nothing to do with parallel lines or perpendicular lines. The rule for a rhombus is four sides are the same size. And what I usually do as a mathematician when I'm given a question on, and I'm allowed to write on the paper, I usually make marks to show that they are the same. So when you put one line through it and you put a line through that, you're saying they're both the same. And so if you do it with all four, you're saying all of them are the same. So notice that even though this is like basically a square, this is a square turned, you know, no difference. And then this is not a square, but it's like it's like one of these, but it's just shifted a little. But this is, this is a rhombus because all four sides are the same. Again, it has nothing to do with the angles. Angles is far from the definition of rhombus. Rhombus is just about the size. So let me show you something that would not be considered a rhombus and what I usually do to show evidence. So if I do this and this, I'm saying that these both are the same size, but then to show a different size, I put a double line. So then I'm saying, well, this one and this one are the same size. So this obviously would not be considered a rhombus. So let's look at some examples. So I don't even really need to make a bunch of different examples. I just got to make sure that it has the same size, all the same size, all sides are the same size. And so it can be like this or it can be tilted. It can be extremely tilted like that. It could be tilted this way. It can be just a little bit tilted. All four sides are still the same. It doesn't matter. This is a rhombus at the end of the day. Here's one more. All four sides are the same. Again, tilted a little, tilted a lot, extremely, you know, it, 
what I like about these manipulatives is you can have all four sides the same and then just shift them. At the end of the day, it's still a rhombus because all four sides are the same.